sometimes things happen in our lives that we didn't expect them to look quite the way they happen for us. Why is that? Well, we had an expectation of an event turning out a certain way, only it didn't turn out that way. So what do we do with that? Well, some people are going to get angry about it. Some people are just going to feel sad or disappointed or cheated. And they're going to say, man, this always happens to me and things don't work out for me. And how come that's happening? I was so looking forward to this. And then really, really, really got crushed by nothing happening. So what's going on? Well, you have an expectation. And where do you get the expectation? Oh, it comes from inside you because it's how you wish things would happen and how you're looking forward to things being a certain way. Like, I don't know how many times I heard women say, oh, if he really loves me, he'll change. Well, duh, if you want him to change, you have no business being in a relationship, especially in a marriage with somebody like that. What if instead you learned how as a choice? And what if instead you made the choice to accept everything as it shows up in your world? I remember 30 years ago, I had my plans for my life, right? And every time something came up, either it was one of my children, I raised performing children. So I was constantly having my own plans thwarted. But that was a choice I made because they enjoyed performing. And I realized, well, actually, it was a while before I realized it. I called them detours. I call them detours on my life journey because it's not where I was planning to go. If my plan was to go a nice smooth ride, only it wound up going zigzag, zigzag, zigzag in all kinds of directions that I never anticipated is even being possible. Well, that was what caused me stress and grief and disappointment. And then years later, after many years of going through that and having major disappointment after major disappointment, I thought, wait a minute, nothing happens to me or to you. Everything happens for you. So before you jump away from here, let me explain exactly how that looks in your life. Have you ever heard the phrase, you want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. For many years, I was following all these gurus who said, do step one, and then step two, and then step three. In other words, setting out a plan of action that may or may not be in your highest and best interest or in the highest and best interest of the people who you're looking to impact, with whom you're looking to connect. And then I thought, huh, nothing happens accidentally. And if all these people keep coming into my world that are posing a challenge or making my world look crummy, it's time to wake up. It's time to open my eyes. It's time to see the universe is just telling me, here's a lesson that I can learn. Here's a way I can grow to be more of who I came here to be, to be a happier, healthier person who can impact others with love, 
with understanding, with listening. I'm a really good listener. In fact, I teach people listening skills because it's not something that we learn in school and sure not something we learn in our family situations. I also teach people how to talk so others will want to listen to you. I was on a business chat today and the person had some experiences growing up and she was so stuck in them and she kept going on and on about them. And I stopped her and I said, that's the past. And all those things that happened, they happen. So you'd have an opportunity to look at, well, why would the universe put those people and that situation in my world over and over and over again? It's because you didn't get the message the first time or the second time or the 10th time because you were so stuck with your expectations that things should go the way you decided they should go. Only you don't really know the big picture of what's best for you. For instance, sometimes people say, well, if you want to have your dream job, make a list of everything that your dream job has for you. And so somebody does that and they get an offer of what they thought was their dream job. Only they realized once they got into it, this isn't what I want. And that's the universe saying, that's not really the best place or the best experience for you. Or sometimes the universe will kind of, it looks like it's teasing you. Here's a job that you're asking for. Only when you go apply for it, oh my goodness, it's already been filled by somebody else. What if instead of disappointment or even anger, you looked at it as realizing Yes, the universe could offer you job A. However, there's a job B that's not available just yet. And you don't know that it's there for you. So by not succeeding at getting job A, you're available when job B comes open for you. And the same thing is true for the relationship that you think you want. There's something better for you or there's something better for you at a different time. But the universe is always, always, always doing what's in your highest and best interest. So let me share with you what I finally discovered about that. That accepting what comes to me and going with the flow. I guess that's one way you could say it. In other words, instead of me putting out how I want my day to go, I put out to be aware of those messages coming nonstop to me and to you all day long, every day. And you can discover how to tune into them because it's not hard. You just have to know that they're there and they're there for you. So what are some ways messages come at you? Well, you might be on the road driving and you might drive by a billboard and you just have a moment to take just a couple words off that billboard. It's a message you were supposed to see. Or if you're, say, in New York City or someplace where they have subways and somebody's reading a paper or reading a magazine or reading a book and you're seeing the opposite side, not the side meeting their eyes, but the side being projected out toward you. Oh, those words, they're meant for you. Or you might overhear just a tidbit of a conversation when you're waiting in line someplace. Those are some of the ways that the messages are coming at you. And when you practice, and I recommend doing it through meditation, not going through a guided meditation, 
but just being open with sort of a blank mind so the messages can come in and you can catch them. And meditation doesn't mean you need to empty your mind. It just means to notice what's passing by. Because some of those things going passing by, you might want to grab onto them. I remember I was being interviewed by somebody once upon a time, and she said for years she wanted to learn how to speak Spanish, but she never made the time. The time's not going to just be there. You have to make the choice to make the time. She said she never made the time to do it. So after our interview, she got in her car. She interviewed me twice. That's why after the interview, I knew what happened again on the second interview. She got in the car, turned on her radio. And what do you think happened? Any guesses? Anybody have a guess? Okay. What she turned on was a Spanish speaking station. And she said she never ever entered or programmed in a Spanish speaking station. So she recognized this was the universe saying, yo, maybe now is a good time for you to fulfill that dream of learning Spanish. So there's always a reason for everything that happens in your world. And another thing that happens is when people come into your world and you think they hurt you, People are constantly saying things like, you hurt my feelings. Well, no, that's not even possible. Nobody does anything to you. You can only get your feelings hurt by how you interpret, how you choose to interpret something that somebody said. It's your decision to interpret it in a way that's hurtful for you. Do you realize that you have 35,000 choices to make every single day? It's because everything that you're doing, every moment of your life, you're making a choice. You don't even realize it because you've been doing it all your life. And one of the kinds of choices is when somebody says something or somebody does an action that you interpreted as being hurtful. You think they hurt you. Actually, they give you a gift. See, I'm a minister. I'm a metaphysical minister. And I have a ceremony that I do with people on forgiveness. And I've had people go through it and say, gee, I worked on that issue so many times with so many people and spent so much money. And it's still there. Yeah, it was still there. Because the very basic part of forgiving is forgiving love. So all the people that you think hurt you in your life, they were there giving you love by putting this action in your world to make you wake up, to make you pay attention, to make you say, oh, I don't have to choose to interpret it as hurtful. as one of your 35,000 choices you're making in a day. Instead, you can make, here's another one of those 35,000 choices. I can see it as you're allowing me, instead of interpreting it as hurtful, to interpret it as an opportunity, a gift. And I can actually say thank you because you did that for me, not to me, for me, I got to take on a whole new behavior that I wasn't ever going to consciously step into. Does anybody have a comment or a question on that? So your world is going to look a whole lot easier if You're using your 35,000 choices a day to pay attention to the choice that you have on how to interpret what's happening in your 
world. And here's something that you might want to do. You might want to spend a day making a list of everyone who ever hurt you. Remember, you think they hurt you. All across your whole life. Now, for me, my list was three pages long. And I started it on one day, and I came back to it the next day, and that's how it wound up being three pages long. Then I went through that whole list, and I thanked every person on it. And I thanked them for who I got to become that was different from who I was before. They gifted me with what I previously thought was a personal attack. And guess what happened? Anybody have a guess on that one? What happened was I changed my whole past. My past now was something that empowered me instead of hurting me. What would your life look like if you could that simply change your past by changing your interpretations by recognizing they're your expectations, they're your interpretations, and they're gifts to you from the universe. At some point, through the meditation, through changing your definition of forgiveness, you just may start to know things. I've just known things all my life. I didn't know why. I didn't understand why. But suddenly in the past year, I had such clarity of what was going to happen in my world and to people who I knew in my world. Because those messages were always coming at me, just as they're coming at you. So now I'm aware. Sometimes it'll come through a day or even two days ahead of the actual event, but they come through every single time without fail. They're happening in your world. So take a look around what's happening for you. And here's another thing to notice. You'll only see what you're expecting to see. There's that word expectations. So are you expecting to see beautiful, loving things that support you where you want to go in your life? Or are you like, unfortunately, way too many. In fact, most people out there are focusing on what they don't want in their life. So what happens when you focus on what you don't want? Well, the universe can't compute a negative. It doesn't catch the don't part of it. So it keeps giving you what it's taking on as what you don't want as a choice you are making. And because you're saying don't want and don't recognize how the universe is interpreting or hearing it, you just think, ah, the universe doesn't give me anything I want anyway. And the universe 100% of the time gives you what you ask for. So pay attention to how you're asking. Pay attention to what your expectations and your beliefs about those expectations are. And when you're looking for all that's good and beautiful in your world, because it's there all the time, you're just not seeing it because you're not consciously looking for what you want. Suddenly, your vision will change. Your eyes will open. You'll wake up and you'll become aware that your world is filled, absolutely filled with what's making you happy, what feels good for you. 
And I used to think it was because the universe saw you feeling happy and looking for the things that were happy. So it kept giving you more. But then I recognized that the universe was always giving you things to allow you to feel happy, to allow you to feel grateful. So what happens when you're feeling happy and you're feeling grateful? You have a whole different consciousness, a whole different awareness of what's happening in your environment, in your world, in your life. And it's all because you're going with what is. All those things that I used to call detours in my world, they weren't detours. Let me give you a very powerful example in my life. I was uh, in the mainstream psychotherapy world. And I thought I wanted a career. I thought I wanted my doctorate in uh, psychology. And then something happened to my mom when she turned 80. Something changed in how she was interpreting the world. It wasn't Alzheimer's and it wasn't dementia. And I know part of it was cataracts that we didn't know she had. So she couldn't see the world the way we were seeing the world. And that caused her to have interpretations of how things were happening in the world that nobody else could see because nobody else had her vision. And that began to impact how her brain was functioning. Now, I was doing my internship in psychotherapy, in psychology at the time. And as a matter of fact, I was actually in my uh, doctoral program. And it got to the point where my mom was in danger if she was alone because she'd see horrible things, scary things, including people coming to kill her. And interesting that my internship had been in chronically mentally ill. Did I know that was gonna happen to my mom? No, but the universe was leading me on a path that I was not resisting. And because I learned my way around the whole world of the chronically mentally ill, I knew exactly how to take care of my mom. I knew exactly the connections I needed to get her the care that she needed so I could know at least a whole lot better how to keep her safe. Nothing happens accidentally, nothing. Everything happens to make your world better. And while I was in that program and working in a facility that I had no business working in, it was crisis care. And I didn't want to work mainstream psychology and it didn't leave, and it didn't leave. This was a choice I made not to leave, not to leave, not to leave. And then one day the universe put me in, and I'd worked with this person before. She was three times my size. She was very dangerous. Everybody knew she belonged in the hospital, but the people in the hospital kept allowing her to go out in the world. So anyway, she cornered me and she was so enormous. I literally could not move any part of my body. She kept whacking me in the head. <laughs> I'm laughing because what a choice I made to stay there. I'd been with her in situations like that before. She didn't attack me, but the universe just decided I wasn't listening to its messages to leave. So I wound up with a really bad brain injury. Not that there's any such thing as a brain injury that isn't really bad. And it took me completely out of the world. I couldn't use my eyes. I was too dizzy to function. I couldn't follow a conversation. 
I had to go within. Guess what I learned to do when I went within? I learned how to meditate. I learned how to hear the messages coming from the universe. I had been meditating for years, but I never got this kind of clear information before. I learned and the universe directed me because I followed every, you could call it a nudge. I call it instinct that I was finally tuning into. I went to all these different energy workers and that's how I healed because mainstream psychology and even psychiatry and even physical wellness doctors couldn't help me. They did what I call a death sentence. And they said, this is as good as it gets, learn to live with it. And I wasn't willing to do that. I made a different choice. I didn't know about the 35,000 choices, but I'll tell you what, I was using a whole lot of those 35,000 choices to change how I was present in the world, how I interpreted what was going on in the world. And I got better and I got better and I got better. And then the universe kept giving me more information so that I could actually create my own energy modality and change lives in a way that my own life was changed. And I took it a step further by doing my own work on me. Nothing in your world, in your life is accidental. Nothing happens to you. And when you make the choice to accept things as they are, your life is going to be so much easier. So instead of getting up in the morning and telling the universe what I want to do that day, I asked the universe, how can I serve today? Which puts me in a different frame of what I'm noticing and how I'm responding to the situations that come into my world. It's empowering me to empower others to live their best lives. Because why else would you be here except to be part of the community? And I used to say the community, the community of mankind. But I've lived oh the last seven years in the country. And I see all kinds of wild animals. And I recognize we're not really a whole lot different from all of them. I'm talking about deer and turkeys. I only saw one eagle, but a lot of hawks. A lot of birds I've never seen before. Of course, squirrels, foxes, rabbits, coyotes, bobcats, mountain lions. I see all these things and I watch them. And except for the frontal lobe that we have in our brain that allows us to think and plan, there's no way those animals aren't planning. It's extraordinary to watch how the mothers take care of their offspring. And man, I saw one turkey with 11 offspring. So I believe we're all one energy and we all share love. I totally communicate with the trees and there's a certain tree with whom I energetically communicate when I'm doing my qigong and I get the healing energy. If you know anything about Chinese medicine, the wood energy that feeds exactly where I have some very stuck qi energy of life. When you look at your world, as one full of opportunities to grasp, to take on instead of forcing what you think you should be doing. You're not only enriching your own life, but you're enriching all the life in the whole cosmos. 
Does anybody at this point have a question or a comment? Oh, my phone looks like it's getting ready to die. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close right now. And I look forward to you contacting me because I love to connect with people. That's how I grow, by learning how you view the world and the choices that you make. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you more often. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me here today for this edition of Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Remember to join our Facebook group because I put something in there every single day. And you can also join our special community on Patreon. And all these links will be down below or in the show notes. And remember to enjoy. That's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Because nothing in life happens outside of you. Your brain, your mind, your body are what experience life as you know it. And I look forward to being here with you next time. Remember to pick up your copy of Step in a New Direction, because isn't it time that you took on your life looking at everything differently from how you always have. I look forward to your comments and connecting with you. Oh, and by the way, in the community at Patreon, one of the levels lets you join in with a Zoom, a live Zoom, where you can ask all your questions and you can meet other people like you. Oh, no.